we carry on on, uh, on our explanation for chapter two, railway rolling stock systems, and we have reached section five, we'll, we'll be talking about rail wheel adhesion. The concept of adhesion is an important concept in railways, which is very much can be understood as friction, but we will uh, uh, talk about it in more details. So to explain this, let us move to the slides. So this is the this is the wheel rail adhesion, and we will be talking about the following topics. We will be talking about terminology and units. We'll be talking about what is traction and braking demand, taking case studies, looking at UK adhesion levels. We'll talk about optimizing the use of available adhesion, how we can uh, optimize it by increasing the available adhesion or decreasing the available adhesion. And we'll be looking at relevant standards, uh, not much, but as much as just knowing about how we can increase the adhesion and how we can decrease the adhesion. It should be noted that many of these notes are being taken from Stephen Kent notes on adhesion. That was done on a presentation in 2010. So terminology, terminology and units, rolling resistance, which is the resistance between the wheel and the rail, friction, which is resistance between the material of the wheel and the material of the rail. Adhesion is very much semi, similar to friction and units of acceleration, which is meter per square second, because it's important and impacts braking and traction. So to understand adhesion for railways, it's the frictional resistance, the frictional resistance, the frictional resistance of rails to the tendency of wheels to slip. Wheel slip and wheel spin are the results of poor adhesion. So you have a, a, a train that is, uh, rolling the wheel, but the wheel is not moving. So this is, we call wheel spin. And for wheel slip, you have a, a train that is trying to brake, but it slipped, it slips instead of uh, slowing down. So you, uh, the driver somehow lose control and you feel this in cars. So the typical braking rate deceleration is 0.9 meter per second square. And the level of adhesion between steel and wheel, uh, steel and wheel in rail varies. So in warm days, it will be around 0.6, but if you have leaves or if you have leaf film and uh, low level of adhesions, it might reach up to 0.01, which will result on a wheel slips and wheel, sl uh, or a wheel slips and sometimes wheel spins, it depends on the location. So many factors affect adhesion, including ice, the existence of ice, leaves, and sometimes fine sand. And this is a, a, a very common phenomena, like on a winter day, where you have ice on the rails, you might see that trains are going at a much lower speed to prevent any potential slips. So traction and braking demand, adhesion levels. The measure of percent G is used to describe traction, braking demand, and the amount of available adhesion. A typical UK freight braking demand is 6% G. A typical UK service uh, braking demand, this is passenger, is 9% G. But for emergency braking demand is 12% G. And you can see the picture of the sand here might affect the adhesion levels because it's a fine sand. So for typical acceleration rates, now we talked about the braking demand. We need to talk about traction demand. Freight train is 0.2 meter per second square. Intercity train is 0.5 meter per second square. And the metros in 1.3 per meter per second square. So metros accelerate much faster than uh, an intercity train where it's increased the speed gradually. But metros uh, increase the speed quick, accelerate quickly, then break quickly. So because the stops are much closer to each other or they don't have that distance between each other. When, traction, when tra uh, traction or braking demand is greater than the available adhesion, the following will happen. Either you have a wheel spin, wheel uh, spinning around its place, but it's not moving, or wheel slip, the actually wheel is slipping on the rail. So how we can optimize the available adhesions? Through motors, so some motors will reduce the torque if the wheel spins. So if they feel they are, uh, the, the, the movement of the wheel, wheel is not reducing the distance, uh, they will, uh, they will uh, the, row, the torque will be reduced. And this is controlled through motors. 
sometimes you maximize by uh, you maximize braking by introducing anti-lock braking systems, which will prevent uh, sliding. Also, wheel slide protection is another uh, another system. Uh, you and it has a very simple philosophy. If one axle, so that's axle. If one axle starts to rotate significantly slower than the others, this means it's slipping. So it compares between different axles and how they are uh, uh, rotating. How we increase the available adhesion? For braking, we can have a, a sand shot where it's, you have a nozzle and it puts sands on the track. And we had a picture of that, I guess, in the beginning. This is the one. So this is sand being injected to the track. And or you can improve the infrastructure through removing the leaves, through water jets, or any other kind of uh, arrangement to make sure that the infrastructure uh, uh, retains its original adhesion levels. Sometimes you would need to increase, ad uh, decrease adhesion through uh, lubrication and modifiers, especially in curves, because to decrease even the damage. That was everything I would like to in let you know about adhesion. It's a concept that you need to be knowing about railways, and uh, we will be uh, discussing a new topic in the coming lecture, which is about uh, active suspension, and we'll be talking about the suspension systems and the new method of controlled active suspension system. Have a great evening.